Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back to Highly Inspired. I'm Ella. And I'm Jordan. Hey, guys. Um, this week, before we dive into our episode, which is going to be about the Pluto return, which has just kind of kickstarted uh, this week on 22222, two, 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 two. Yep. Um, we are going to just have a short announcement. Our Kickstarter is live. Um, I think the last Ooh. time we recorded, it was pretty much right before it went live but it's been live now for two or three weeks um we've already met um a fifth of way towards our goal which is really exciting we have about a month and a half left of that so please check out the link in the description for this um watch our video that will um support us and also feel free to um support us financially in any way that you want to give there's also some nice prizes that come along with that and just feel free to share the link as well we really appreciate um anything you can do even if it's just watching our video so yeah the link for the trailer video will be in the description of this episode and even if you aren't interested in checking out the Kickstarter um, we invite you to watch that trailer because it is sort of a good context on Highly Inspired why we do this why we do the podcast how we built the podcast and uh, just a little bit more about us so I think that's a great um, introduction to who we are if you are a, a new listener first time person seeing one of our new episodes so uh, yeah yeah Great. Um, well, before we dive into Pluto's return and what effect that might have on even the financial system in the U.S. with everything that's going on in the crypto space and in the traditional financing space and kind of the blend of the two, um, let's talk about this week and let's just talk about 22222 two, 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 two <laughs> and what <laughs> happened and what that date was and kind of just kind of all the weird symbolism behind it. Yeah, every time I said the date, like two, two, like I don't even know how many twos there are. Just just, like, just so just many twos. <laughs> yeah. So guys, the amount of coincidences just with the numerology of two, 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 2022 um, is insane. It ended up happening on a Tuesday, which was then labeled Tuesday as in T-W-O. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if there's any correlation with that, but it is pretty interesting to think about. Um, and social media just blew up with you know, content surrounding what this date means since it's a palindrome date. Um, Kanye the, got involved. Yeah, Kanye <laughs> dropped an album. I don't, <laughs> only him would choose a day like that that's yeah. just like so multifaceted with all of these mystical elements of it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I routinely was thinking about it throughout the day and, and we're recording, at, recording after it, but I'm kind of glad that we are because we came across a lot more content surrounding the whole topic that was published after the actual day. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we, we definitely had spent a lot of time sort of unfolding it. Yes. Yeah. Some initial things that kind of came up was if you multiply the date together, you get 1776 and the reason why this is relevant is for all of our like history nerds out there you know that america was founded on july 4th 1776 that is mm -hmm. when um you know the revolutionary war happened and we gained the our independence, Declaration of independence and all that type of stuff yeah so it is on top of it being america's birthday it is a larger symbol of the start of democracies we were the first Full democracy in the world and we kind of um set the pathway for countries to do that and really try to gain their independence um whether that's been successful or not in different countries that's up for debate but really that is what the symbolism is there and whether you're someone who believes in symbolism or you think it's a bunch of nonsense maybe you only believe in the physical world um jordan and i aren't big i wouldn't say we're like astrology girls or we're like <laughs> no we people. are the furthest things like we that. are not someone that has a lot of um natural like interest or like kind of we don't treat that like any sort of religion or um say all be be all sort of thing but i do think it's interesting because i think people do kind of take this the symbolism seriously i mean even when we went back to like the travis scott situation he mm. had a lot of symbolism in his show and whether or not he knew what he was doing with that symbolism it still had negative energy correlations and if you do believe mm. in a spiritual dimension of the world what are you channel channeling by kind of tapping into that yeah. symbolism and so with this date 
there's a lot of symbolism and it goes back to the Pluto return, which we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. Now that you mentioned the Travis Scott Astro World extravaganza, yeah. I've noticed, I'm realizing this just now, um, sort of me tapping into understanding more of the astrology and spiritual and numerology related components of these events that are happening. It kind of started with that. Yeah. Have you noticed more of like an uptick? Re with TikTok like, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, especially on social media. So I just noticed that. But um, yeah, the Pluto return, totally different, totally new. Um, this is so huge because... Pluto is returning after 248 years to the place it was in its previous orbit when America was first founded. Mm -hmm. And what are the odds of that, that America, this massive, you know, economic shift, cultural shift that happened in the entire world at the time when it was founded, um, that that was occurring at the same time as this, you know, celestial mm -hmm. like enigma, which is like a planet um, alignment. Yeah, alignment. I mean, that's, I mean, we only have, aside from Earth, we have eight other planets that we share our solar system with. And, you know, how galaxies are, they're so spread apart. Um, I, I do, I will give astrology points for sort of explaining that depending on where things are placed in our nearby like environment, mm -hmm. maybe that does shift like energies and like gravity and, you know, forces because um gravity is what makes all of these planets spin around the sun and mm -hmm. i mean that's a force and i don't know i i just think that there i don't although i don't believe astrology is a religion or anything like that i do think that there are physical and scientific explanations to why these things do what they do yeah um so that's kind of where my brain sort of lies with perceiving the astrology um like facets yeah and something that i i feel like i should say before we kind of dive in specifically to the pluto return is that my feelings on astrology which actually um on band.video.com there's a short little uh video on um this Pluto return in astrology um, and the, the narrator of it basically is explaining that, um, you know, even if you don't necessarily, like if you don't necessarily like fully believe it as a religion, you can't deny that astrology was the first science that then jumpstarted all the different sciences mm -hmm. and the physical sciences and the bio biology and all that. And then if you are religious and, and not even religious with um, astrology, but let's say um, you're Christian or you're Jewish, you can't deny the symbolism that appears um, throughout the Bible or the Torah or the Quran. Um, for example, like in Christianity, you have the star of David, which was represented, uh, represented the birth of Christ. And then I watched this documentary on YouTube that basically explained all the different ages and how basically Christ came at the second age, which was, you know, the turning of all these different things similar mm -hmm. to this, this Pluto return. And so you can't deny that there was, um, you know, people that use the stars to explain what's been happening in the world. And that's been kind of revealed, revealed to them. And it might exist whether or not you acknowledge it. And I think that it actually can, um, intertwine with some religions, even though some religions might be, some totally some um some um you know versions of christianity might say oh you can't even think about this like you can only follow what we're saying word for word but i mm -hmm. actually think the two can kind of coexist and that doesn't mean that you want to put one energy beh ab above the creator or the ultimate source of power but you can still use it as a potential um, reasoning for why other powers would want to tap into something like this, mm -hmm. um, which we're going to get into later. But basically with the Pluto's return, in addition to the U S going through this, this is something that many 
large civilizations, empires have gone through, and it's been very tightly cor um, correlated to kind of their birth and death. And the fall of the Roman Empire actually happened on that empire's second Pluto return. So that's really mm -hmm. interesting. And that happened around, I think, like 400 AD. So um, that's really fascinating. Similar to, say, similar to what happened with the Roman Empire, there are several other um, countries that have experienced like major cultural and economic shifts because of their Pluto returns at that mm -hmm. time, not the same time as when America had it. But France, for example, um, when they had their Pluto return, Napoleon died. And with Russia, um, Stalin died. Yeah. So, I mean, those are massive historical deaths that we have all learned about that mm -hmm. we constantly reference. And the fact that those also happened at the same time as a Pluto return. Um, I think that there's something to be said about yeah, that. There's definitely I mean, there's definitely something really kind of fishy and curious. So, um, yeah, I think that that just adds to the weight of sort of what this is and mm -hmm. um, what that means for this year of 2022 mm -hmm. and uh, what could potentially happen, what will correlate to it, what might not, might not correlate to it, but yeah. Yeah, so I totally agree. And for those who don't know, the Pluto return, it usually lasts two years, which is interesting because in the next two years here in America, we're going to have two big elections. We're going to have the midterms, which there's been a lot of pressure on that, a lot of discussion around that, um, especially with just kind of like the state of the country that we're in right now and a lot of kind of normal people kind of stepping up and trying to run um, for Congress um, and replace some of these more bureaucratic uh, long-term um, politicians um and then you also then again are you gonna have the 2024 election which is gonna be huge so we have these yeah. two elections coming up in these two years also um the, basically the pluto return means that you were either going to go into a destruction period or a rebirth or some combination of the both mm -hmm. and so we could either be in a positive rebirth or a negative rebirth. And how are people <laughs> going to, are we going to go with a true revolution or a pseudo revolution, which we're going to get into later. But I think that that's mm -hmm. something that, um, you know, is of concern because I think that we all can agree no matter where you are in the political spectrum, that things are not working right now. Um, the people in charge are not, fault are not doing things appropriately systems are collapsing people like our generation we have almost little to no trust in institutions anymore i don't trust hospital systems i don't trust a lot of doctors i don't trust um a lot of corporations there's a lot of mm -hmm. corporations that i wouldn't work for probably most um and by corporation i mean like super large companies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so i think that we're at a point where what is this next generation going to do with this distrust? Are we going to put it into more decentralized things? Are we going to start believing in ourselves or are we going to totally freak out and put it into like a huge centralized power? You know, I think those are the only two options and they're complete opposites. Yeah. Um, it's, that's like the question I think. Um, something that I did want to point out regarding the Pluto, Pluto return. And I just recently figure this out through some research is when a return isn't just like a day, you know, it didn't just happen, you know, the other day on two, 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 um, because the orbit is so slow, it's going to be returning or in transit for the next two years. That's why this whole time between 2022 and the year 2024 is so important because it's going to be over America for that entire time. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, if you're coming across any content relating to this and talking about these next two years, I think that that's important, important to point out because, um, I think the most key changes are really going to happen in these next two years. Yeah. Well, like, like I said, across all of these domains, you know, yeah. And we have, um, a lot of things coming up in the next two years. Um, but I wanted to play some of the videos that we have, um, from people, these are just kind of normal people, um, or people that are maybe a little <laughs> bit more well-versed in astrology normal than people. Jordan and I, maybe they're normal, maybe they're not. I didn't do a background <laughs> check, so maybe they're total weirdos. I have no idea, but Jordan and I don't know a lot of the technical things about the astrology side of this. So we wanted to just play a few pieces of content so you can kind of get a sense of it and then we can kind of react to it. So. Okay.
Yeah, I'll start with this one that's just very like general and not super like opinionated, and then we can go to some of the more like opinionated ones. Okay. You, hear it now. you need to start preparing yourself for this date because something huge is about to happen. The United States is having its first Pluto return since the country was founded. Pluto returns only happen once about every 248 years, so this is a once in a lifetime thing. What does that mean for us? So we know that Pluto is all about transformations and deaths and rebirths, so you can imagine how much change is about to come into your life. So many people are going to have such mixed <laughs> ideas about whether this is a good time to manifest because of the change coming in or a bad time to manifest because the energies are all over the place That's me right now. do what you want <laughs> i would say the best way to prepare for this is to one keep hold of your finances and two i would say to keep track of your emotions during this time as they're probably going to change quite a bit and prepare yourself for the change she's saying you need to, to start preparing to preparing yourself for this date because something oh, huge okay. is about to happen she's saying Shut that up. we either should um, that number one, we should budget because it has to do with a lot of finances. We shouldn't be um, frivolously like spending a ton of money. Um, I, I don't know if that also means investing or if we should pull out of the stock market because <laughs> clearly it's not doing too well right now. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that the finance is going to be a component. And then she's also saying to journal because your emotions might be all over the place and it might be good to kind of have some. Well, number two is, <laughs> is definitely a little less tangible than the the monetary advice she's giving. But I, def I agree with both of those. I think that we've already been used to throughout the last two years sort of being on this roller coaster of so many things have been uncertain and it's been so different than the previous set of decades that we have kind of already become so comfortable with that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that that's going to become a lot more exacerbated, but also, yeah, be a little bit more cautious with your money and, and figure out some ways to um, spend it that might allow it to be more secure in these coming months and years, because I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen with the financial system. But Invest in real estate if you can. I know that's hard to do, but even if you can get like a, a REIT or you have um, some way to like do group financing or I know that there's like some crowd uh, sourcing ways to do that. I, I just or even if it just means like owning your own house, another way you can kind of do that is if you're trying to uh, move it into an apartment if you can get a duplex or a triplex or a quadplex you can actually most people can qualify for um, FHA financing so this is a tangent but I just want to get this out there which means that um, for anyone who doesn't know what that means it means you can get like a traditional loan where you might only pay like three to five percent down as opposed to like an investment property where you might have to pay as much as like 20 percent down so if you can do that then you can rent out the other units generate that income and use that to pay the mortgage so that is a short a tiny little tip for the man to compete against BlackRock but I think that um yeah hard assets are going to be huge gold that sort of mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. um and then we'll see what happens with the crypto stuff but I think anything unfortunately the U.S. dollar is just proving to <laughs> like we talked about with the gold standard stuff it shouldn't be a surprise but it's inflation's happening so yeah we're printing money and that devalues the dollar even more than it's already been throughout the last 30 years we've been printing money but yeah they're not they're not helping it at all it's hard to be young right now <laughs> do you want to play another one yeah okay i'm gonna play this one this one has to do with the age of aquarius um which is also really important because i think that's the fourth age and once we hit the age of aquarius aquarius is like kind of a time for revolution also rebirth also like challenging the system kind of being like original and thinking and stuff so i think this will definitely be kind of tied into that yeah yeah i'm a hot mess right now but so is pluto so i'm gonna talk just like this good thing kanye is a super spreader of information because he's a gemini because now that i've got all y'all's attention let's not talk about the pluto return but what the next about 20 years are going to be like with pluto and aquarius Pluto ingresses into Aquarius in March 2023 and will be there until 2044. So, my first order of business during that time is that we're going to completely reinvent the social constructs around time. Daylight savings times, nine to five workdays, no more. Aquarius is the sign of digitalization, technology, the future, science, humanity, and society at large. Next, community-based economies are going to take over. The bad news, capitalism is just going to become out of this world. 
also going to see a reduction in crime, but the crime is also going to go out of this world. Why? Because Aquarius is also the sign of outer space. We're basically on the cusp of a utopian dystopia. Okay, and when she said utopia dystopia. Okay, that's really interesting, and I like that. We are, I think that we currently are living in a utopian utopian dystopia. dystopia. Yeah. Because so many things are shielded to us, making it seem like they're for us, that these systems are for us Mm -hmm. and for the, you know, the development of each and every person in our society, but actually a lot is uh, bankrupting us and we are, we don't, we're, like you said it well in previous episodes, we have freedoms that are not, dis- they're disguised as freedoms when they're not actually freedoms. Yeah. So, um, even that, it's like the vaccine thing that adds so, to yeah. just the dystopianness that like, we're not even recognizing as a dystopia. Exactly. And I think that we think that things like, um, you know, like, let's say you got like a government check all the time like that. Yeah. That might sound great. But then what happens when the government wants you to do something that you don't want to do or you don't get that check? And then there's there's no way for you to make money. You have no skill sets. You've been replaced by robots, like all this stuff. So, yes, we should increase. We need to be focusing on the right human rights to be guaranteed, not the wrong ones. And the things that we can do for ourselves, give us the resources to do that. Do not buy all of our real estate. Do not buy all of our land. Do not turn our natural resources into natural corporate assets and corporations. Like keep our parks parks you know keep our houses houses allow for Mm -hmm. people to achieve that original dream that was being autonomous um make our food healthy like i just saw this video that just i mean not that i didn't know oreos were bad because i know that they're bad but it's not just like (laughs) oh junk food versus non. it's not just sugar we're not just talking sugar and like fats and like saturated we're talking about like chemical compounds that are not edible but they've they've been designed to be digestible but they actually like deteriorate they cause cancer cellular and diabetes and like all the issues that then now we're enslaved to this medical system and now we say well healthcare is a right and maybe some people there's a small percentage of people that were born a certain way with a disability or pre-existing condition but most people who get pre-existing conditions It develops over time and it's because of the stuff that we are putting into our bodies that should not be readily available. So is that freedom? I don't think so, you know? And so I think that what she's saying is correct where we think that we're aiming towards utopia, but it's actually a utopia for the elite. It's not a utopia for the general population. It's a utopia in optics only. Yeah. And everything underneath is dystopian and it's pushing us more towards that dystopian reality and it's sad yeah yeah so i like the way she said that her attitude in this whole video is like kind of it's it's kind (laughs) of a vibe i like it um there were two things though she said something about capitalism is going to be out of this world what do you think that she meant by that i don't know exactly um i did i did pick up on the community-based capitalism comment and i think that that's really interesting because i think that we're heading in again to polarized um distinctions where we could either have like super decentralized communities that are super um you know, embraceive of nature and being able to walk places and being able to um, not be so tied into Amazon deliveries and everything being so fast. Or we could have the opposite where you have a super, not like a super dystopia, utopia community, kind of like this Disney thing where it's people that are either like paying a premium to live in a pseudo reality or it's even worse than that where you have no choice but to kind of live in a Pottersville. Like imagine if Amazon was in charge of designing communities and they're only thinking about efficiency. And so, and everyone is just a piece to that puzzle. Like that's not going to be a very inviting community, but that might be the only option. Um, Do you Mm want to talk about kind of what's going on with the Disneyland thing? Just kind of briefly. Um, to be honest, I don't know much about what's what it means, but 
If you want to talk about it, go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Did you watch the Tim Dillon episode? No, I haven't. I was okay. out of town all weekend. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, we won't talk about it that briefly, that long. But basically, if you haven't caught it already, Tim Dillon did a whole episode on um, Disneyland's doing these uh, communities now, these living communities. And the first one they're doing is in Palm Springs called Cantina. And they are buying, they're basically creating a Cantina. fake. <laughs> yes. Is, is this like a Star Wars related theme? Like, no, is there a theme to it? It's, it's story. It's create your own story. So okay. basically there's going to be, imagine you live in a like gated community and there's this like lagoon in the middle of Palm Springs that um, is going to kind of simulate a body of water, like an ocean. And you have these Disney characters in costumes that work everywhere and they are part of your story. Uh, so you're I almost see. living in like this fantasy land to cope with the, re the horrible realities. So imagine like millennial demographic, you know millennials who are childless but go to Disneyland still? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that is this. That is like what Like couples who are married but don't have any kids. Yeah, and, and they, they just go to Disneyland <laughs> and they're 35 <laughs> and they spend a lot of money on That's junk. the ideal target market for this new venture yes. from Disney. Yes, and it's kind of like, okay, like sorry, nothing else in your life worked out for you because all the systems here suck and we're just conditioned to spend money on material things. Here, live in your storybook, <laughs> your fake story. And don't worry, you might not have friends in real life, but at least Mickey Mouse will be your friend at the local Starbucks. Like, that's basically what this... Okay, so it's basically all of their same, you know, aspects of Disneyland with the characters, with the themes and with But the, you live there. But instead of it being at the park, it's just in Palm Springs. And you live there and you never escape. Oh, you never leave? You live there. Oh my gosh. I thought you were saying like just an Airbnb situation where you like go no, for no, a weekend. No, no, no. You buy these houses. Oh my. You're <laughs> kidding me. No, I'm serious. No. <laughs> There's no way. So you're... you're Wait, you're, that's psycho. And Mickey's will be walking around. It's like a retirement place, but for Disney. And they'll have a 55 plus. So it's just the Magic Kingdom... 24 7 but no rides and maybe there will be i don't know but it's 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 mainly the food yeah <laughs> do they have food carts and Probably, churros I and no it's like <laughs> but the main wow. theme is live in your live in your story so you get to be a part of a disney story 24 7 <laughs> like oh my gosh well this is new this is definitely new and you don't think that other corporations aren't gonna pop on this mcdonald land Oreo Land, I mean, like, um, Carl's <laughs> Jr., uh, Star Wars. Utopian, dis utopian dystopia. Yeah. That's it. It's distract and subvert our attention from the real horrors that are going on. And you know what? Why are we focusing on making theme parks? Like, honestly, in an ideal world, we could have our entire society be a theme park if we wanted to. If it were done without corrupt people and in an ethical way. I believe that that could be possible. It's not impossible, but yeah, I mean, look at that. It's just another way to monetize the utopian dystopia. Yeah. So I think we have that region of utopia dystopia communities. I think we have another region, which could be like a Pottersville situation where it's your community's owned by BlackRock and there's a, it's there's no Disney theme. It's just horrible. Yeah. And you're paying rent. You don't even get to own the property. Um, and, and you're you have no control over prices increasing or decreasing. Like you're in and you have mm -hmm. no control over the quality of that product because yeah. it's not competing with anything else. And they'll probably require surveillance. If you don't comply with the surveillance, you won't be able mm -hmm. to to rent there. There'll probably will be a requirement. Social credit score yeah. to even apply to live there. Yeah. So then mm -hmm. we have that community. Or we could have a good alternative, which could be <laughs> like decentralized communities and encouraging community gardens and farming and like the mm -hmm. things that you've talked about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not everything being so data backed and so surveillanced and so, you know, quantified. I don't think that everything, every part of society needs to be like that. I think that we're kind of in that direction right now where we have all these ESGs and all of these numbers that sort of 
give value to people and to institutions and to corporations. And okay, yeah, it's numbers are good to put into a database, but beyond that, what do numbers really imply? It shows a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And when we allow numbers to give humans that hierarchy, it provides them like a pseudo amount of power that they want to preserve. And mm -hmm. so that's what these ESGs are doing. ESG stands for environmental, social, and govern governance. It's basically a metric that um, regulators are using to sort of, yeah, create a hierarchy of those corporations. And so corporations are opting to do whatever they can to meet these measurements so that they can have more of a... I guess, lead in, as opposed to competition. Um, so we're, I think that we're in early stages of that whole corporate credit scoring system. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where that leads. But I just think that anything right now, um, anything that we're seeing of companies buying up land, buying up assets, trying to like take control of large spaces of an industry, they're trying to solidify their place in this hierarchy of corporations and institutions as they know where we're leading in this next two year span of like major changes, major economic changes and social changes. Mm -hmm. So they're like definitely taking extreme measures, um, trying to capitalize on all of that. And what did you tell me? Um, there was two things about the ESG scores that you were telling me about. Number one, you said that the number one, um, organization that, um, oversees these scores and kind of the, process of this was it was tied to the world economic forum or something yeah like i looked up so i was wondering who is it that's looking at all of this esg information and my initial thought was oh maybe this is just an american thing maybe this is tied to the u.s government maybe there's a new branch or committee committee of govern government that has been created to look at all of this so i just looked up like esg regulator and the first thing that came up on Google was something about the World Economic Forum. So surprise, surprise. Classic. Actually, we're not surprised at all. But then next to or aside from the World Economic Forum, there's also a lot of other boards that are um, international, multinational, like the World Economic Forum is, that are also doing the same thing. And all of these are just acronyms that I've never heard of before. The Climate Disclosure Standards Board, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the Global Reporting initiative the united nations of those two too so these are all completely brand new and honestly three that i was already able to find are based in delaware so keep keep your your eyes peeled for anything about delaware because does anyone know anything about delaware all i know i don't is know that <laughs> joe biden goes to delaware a lot that's all I know. you're right he does <laughs> and what happens in delaware have you ever seen like a photo of delaware are there, what, are, you, are there he, monuments in Delaware? Where, where is, it's that tiny one, right? That's yeah. That's by New Hampshire? Yep. I think New Hampshire. Yeah. Or New Jersey. Um, I should know this, but. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it, oh my gosh, it's like so non-existent. And it's, it's technically a state. It's but right next to land, Maryland. Land mass wise, in terms of the amount of area it covers, it's the smallest state by far. I wonder how far from DC it is. Maybe that was also why they like strategically picked it because it's like a small state, so it's probably easy to gain control of. There's got to be some sort of very. And there's tax incentives too, right? Yeah. The laws there for corporations and just overall legal infrastructure must be very loose and casual for all of these nonprofits and organizations to be wanting to like found there. Okay. So it's an hour and 45 minutes from DC. So here we have DC, which is right there, which I think that's in Maryland, right? Mm -hmm. And then you cross over to, well, DC is technically its own state, but doesn't have rights. Anyways, <laughs> and then you cross over this little bay to Delaware. So I, it would make So sense. very close to D.C. Yeah. The moral it's, of it's, the story. It's very close to D.C. Um, or excuse me, Washington's in Virginia. I just want to clarify that so I don't sound stupid. I knew that. Um, anyways, so that was something that I would have loved to learn in business class. Like if – business school because i remember they always talked about delaware in my investing classes but i never knew why i never this was before like 
I took on more of a conspiracy like mindset towards things and kind of a more skepticism um, thought process. But I wish that I had realized that when they made statements like that because I just didn't. Um, Me too. But okay, so I want to play one more video from the same chick that we just heard about. This is kind of the part two of the video. And this gets into the financial revolution, which Jordan and I will get into um, later on, because I think that that's important just outside of the astrology stuff and the Pluto return and all that stuff. You can just you can see it with your own eyes what's happening with the financial systems and crypto and all that. So unpacking Pluto and Aquarius part two. Now we're going to cover cryptocurrency and a financial revolution. First, currency and the jobs that we are working are going to change as we know it. At least half of the industries we have right now will be non-existent within the next 15 years which is predominantly manufacturing, traditional finance, banking, accounting, anything like that. Next, expect a huge Bitcoin crash by the mid-2023. The difference is that this is going to seem a lot worse than it is. It's going to seem catastrophic and unfixable, but it's actually going to correct a lot faster than we think. It's going to push the world to upgrade its digital infrastructure to where Bitcoin and all these other cryptocurrencies are far more secure and effective. And in the first few years of Pluto and Aquarius, expect massive blackouts globally. It's going to put a strain on our power grids, but this is also going to push us towards cleaner energy. Everyone's saying that they're going to move away from fossil fuels by 2070. No, you're going to move from them within the next 20 years because Pluto and Aquarius is going to make you. And for part three, we're going to discuss global geopolitics. So stay tuned. She okay. wild and yeah, um, she's on a rampage. So I agreed with multiple things in there, too. Did you disagree with anything? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think she phrased that in a very, you know, matter of fact way. Yeah. It didn't seem very philosophical, more so. Yeah. Just predictions and opinions. So. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens um, with the industries that she talked about. Um, I, I think it'd be good if we saw us moving away from some of those industries. Um, some of them do scare me a little bit if we keep going on this trend where we aren't manufacturing our own stuff. That does scare me a little bit because I think if we want to be decentralized, like we as individuals, we first need to be decentralized as a country. And that means like not relying on other countries for our manufacturing needs, um, especially yep. since they don't do it in a very ethical way. Um, I mean, even when you look at like people who make the iPhone in these factories in China, they have like suicide watch on these people because they would rather commit suicide some of them then work in these factories so I, I i think that will be interesting um i think that the the crypto stuff is definitely really interesting for sure mm -hmm. okay so i want to go back just really quick because i have a question okay. um when she said that we're in the aquarius you know we're in the aquarius constellation mm -hmm. um that's se that's se separate from saying that we're in the house of capricorn right I think so. Because Capricorn, from what I found, <laughs> Capricorn is the second house of money, property, security, and values. Uh -huh. And so this Pluto return is occurring in that. Yes. And so I think that's why all of these topics and all these industries surrounding money and property and assets and real estate and, you know, manufacturing and products, I think that that's why these are the focuses of these changes. Um, so once again, I was just trying to tie it back to no, that's the <laughs> kind of the Pluto return, return no, thing. No, but. that's smart. Yeah. So we forgot to talk about that, that it's in the Capricorn house, which is why people are like saying that specifically what is going to happen with the age of destruction, all that it has to do with finances, which is kind of why you're seeing the elites kind of gear up with their strategy and something that Jordan and I wanted to bring up. I think before diving into the different financial stuff was why, why now? Why do, are the, why are these elites? So are they superstitious? Do they buy into this stuff? Are they planting this stuff? Like what's going on? What's the correlation between the elites, the people that are in such a rush to expedite their plan um, that they're honestly, they're showing their cards um, I think that for the last 30 years, they did a really good job hiding from us yeah. the Iraq war, the weapons of mass destruction, the 
bailing out of the banks. Like there were not a lot of people 9/11. that were nine eleven <laughs> that were awake to those types of things. It was a very small minority. Post COVID, it's definitely not the case. Post post the technology you know like the technological advancement that we've had with everything being connected and the amount of access to information I think that that has revealed a lot more um so prior to even just smartphones being mobilized and in everyone's hands I don't I think that they knew that information was not as accessible and that's why so that's probably another reason why too but um yeah I think that the significance of that two 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 date I mean, think of how many elites are probably capitalizing on that. And, and with more people knowing that this Pluto return is going to mean so much change for the next two years, like they're going to, I think that they're going to really hop on that and say, oh, we need to make, you know, we need to stay at like 50 steps ahead. We need to be on top of what's happening. We need to, you know, focus on climate change. We need corporations to focus on climate change. We need, um, we need to keep things under control because like astrology is changing the world. Like I think that they're going to use that to their advantage or try to. Do you think that they, so what we've discovered is that at least what I've discovered is that things aren't coincidences. Things don't just happen. Um, people don't just kind of in charge, just make huge mistakes. Um, and things are actually very, um, ritual ritualistic. Um, you go back to even things like Bohemian Grove, you hear about, um, just the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. Why did he have a temple on an Island? Um, do we think, you know, do we think that these elites believe in rituals and do you think that they, um, think that rituals are in relation to, um, astrology and if they do certain things at certain points in time that will help them accelerate their goals um, I mean you used to have in ancient civilizations people did certain uh, sacrifices around certain points of the night or the moon or mm-hmm. or the, the harvest season because mm-hmm. they thought that those sacrifices would help with the harvest now whether or not that's a coincidence or if they were really channeling dark spirits to give them food that that's up for debate but that is kind of the thinking here yep. um at least the potential thinking of why the rush and um so do you think that these elites think that there is a huge significance in these two day these two year periods and the years subsequent to that AK, we have that 2030 date we have all these dates that are really coming at us fast i do yeah to implement all this stuff i think that there are some elites that are ritualistic and they don't even know that they are being ritualistic. I think there are elites that look at this astrology stuff and really do believe in it and like are letting that channel and conjure up more motivation to enact what they want to enact. But I do think there's also elites who perceive this as, you know, BS and they know it to be BS, but they're still going to use it and capitalize on it anyway because they're going to infer that, the majority of society, once they pick up on this Pluto return information that they're going to fall for it. I think that there's like, we can't group all the elites together and what they're going to do, but I do think that the collective will try to use this change as a channel for like, you know, anytime that people are conditioned to change, people are going to hop on that and try to push their change. But it's also like, do they want to keep this a secret because they don't want people to be resistant towards this? Because this isn't something that is a slam dunk for them. This is either destruction or rebirth. And it's not clear if that rebirth Mm. is on our favor or their favor. So maybe they think, like, are they trying to keep it a secret? Are they trying to just do it behind the scenes? Or are they... um, or do they That's not like have a point. disregard for it? Like what's kind of their mindset? And then something that I just wanted to bring up as a side note, apparently Joe Biden's speech on Tuesday, do you see this? What time it started at? Was it? 2.22. You're kidding. I'm serious. I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> Real reaction, guys. Like, why? Oh my gosh. What are the odds? See, these things are not <laughs> coincidental. There is no way. There's just no way. The odds of that are insane. When you look at these massive things in our history that seem like a coincidence, like what are the probability 
that this many things this often are coincidences. I don't know. Like I think that we're kind of like, it, it, sometimes it seems like the human mind has an easier time mm-hmm. perceiving coincidences because it's just like, oh, it's up to chance or it's yeah. the universe or it's God, whatever it is. But also, come on, like that has to be conjured up and fabricated yeah. and just created somehow. What I'm imagining in my head, and I told Jordan this, is that I am thinking about that scene in the cartoon Disney version of Hercules where Hades is, is in, com- he's been planning for years upon years about this return that he's going to have. And it's when all the constellations and the stars align and then he can gain more yeah. power to awaken the, the God of fire and the God of water. But and all, all has to align or else but he it, can't do what he well, wants yeah, to do. And, and then, and then it's like, Oh my gosh, but Hercules is going to be in. So I must get rid of Hercules, but then Hercules resurrected and he ended up overthrowing all of these, um, dark energies you know so i i wonder if this is kind of like a similar mindset of the elites where they like really feel the the stress to get this kind of sorted um or not and then something else that i wanted to bring up which jordan and i talked about was are they are they kind of pushing along on the tiktok algorithm on the youtube algorithm this astrology yeah. stuff so that people are less inclined to realize when the solution comes for the rebirth, will that then condition people to accept the manufactured rebirth or the rebirth that is being presented as a solution to the revolution, but is actually a disguise for more centralization and a worse government than we already have? Mm. That is a really good question. Well, they haven't censored anything from what I can tell, like relating to the Pluto return. Mm. I haven't seen any like overt censorships or flags or, you know, tags, how they do like, oh, this might be misinformation or whatever. I haven't seen anything like that, which normally anything relating to the Great Reset or ESGs or, oh, nothing and you will be happy or COVID. the climate crisis or climate yeah. shutdown, anything of the, anything of that sense always has a flag on it. And so maybe it'll just be a matter of time. Maybe they haven't like picked up on it yet. Maybe hasn't caught that much traction, but um, let's definitely keep our eyes out for if they start doing those flags. Cause I feel like anytime you see those, that's like your indicator that like there's actual truth behind it. That's true. That's <laughs> and they're trying really to subvert point. you away from what it actually is trying to reveal. Yeah. That's, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. We'll stay tuned. Um, should we get into kind of the finance stuff and, um, the centralized so. digital currency that's happening and all that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So we have talked about cryptocurrency in several episodes. Crypto is a topic that has been fairly new in the last two years for sure. It's kind of a cousin of NFTs, which everyone's in NFTs, you know, trading, buying things that are digital I guess you could call them assets, digital assets. Um, You know, it could be anything from video game player costumes or just a PNG of a, of a color. You can literally buy colors now. So NFTs are very broad, but also crypto is very broad because um, the technology that basically runs most cryptos, which is called blockchain technology um, can do a lot of different types of things. It can run ledgers. Um, they can be in the form of databases. Um, they can also be very multi-dimensional sort of like, it's, it's sort of like creating like an, an, a digital orb that has to be like mined and unlocked. Um, so they're, they're very different. And a lot of cryptocurrencies, how they've marketed themselves is by explaining to people how different they are compared to other cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get that. Like, all, like since there's literally hundreds of cryptos now, I get that standpoint of trying to explain to people like the technology behind who you are and why you're different from Bitcoin or why you're different from Ethereum. Um, But I think it's really important to 
just sort of talk about crypto as like an overall concept and sort of tie it to how, since we have like a central banking system, what's the potential for them to create their own crypto? Yeah. And so this um, acronym, it's called CBDC, yeah. um, Central Which... Banking Cryptocurrency or Digital Currency, um, is is trending right now. And I think that we're going to start to see it a lot more often because... Yeah, why couldn't the central banking system have a digital currency? Uh, would they fall into that network? Would they would they be accepted by the cryptocurrency world? Would they force the cryptocurrency world to yeah. accept them? Would are they, they hijack going, the cryptocurrency? Are world? they tainting Bitcoin on purpose? These are the questions that I have. <laughs> why are they all of a sudden derailed from the whole vaccine thing it seems like they gave up on that you see all these countries now that are reopening the uk blah blah i mean there's still some countries that like canada that are dealing with the trucker situation whatever but even justin trudeau today said he's no longer um invoking his emergency powers which two days ago he was going to do so why the shift in that and now why all the focus on these cbdc things as inflation's happening as our own cryptocurrency is de getting crashing yeah. and what's going on with that. And there's a really good clip that I want to share that was from Joe Rogan, where this is where this is kind of, I think it does a great explanation of this transition from the vaccine passports, not being as big of a focus to, um, the, this new digital cryptocurrency, not crypto, but centralized banking currency. Our chancellor, who does our economy, called Chancellor of the Exchequer, his name's Rishi Sunak. He's put out this video. This is all on my feeds, by the way, my social feeds. He put out this video saying that um, what they want to do is bring in this uh, thing called the central banking digital currency. They want to replace fiat paper money with digital money as a competitor to Bitcoin and crypto money, right? But instead of being uh, decentralized currency, it will be controlled by a government. It's digital currency, but controlled centrally through the banks, Bank of England. So instead of having a bank account with whatever, HSBC or Bank of America, you'll have a bank account directly with, in the American context, with the Fed. In the UK, directly with the Bank of England. You have a personal bank account with and you're Fed. given digital money in that bank account. These are called central banking digital currencies. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK has already announced their intention to do this as the G7 group. And these, uh, if you look up... Um, this sounds terrifying. If you look up uh, the Telegraph, <laughs> you Google it. there's a lot of headlines about it. Yep, there's Just a specific it. article in the Telegraph, uh, programmable digital currency. Yeah, um, if you can't find it, I'll pull it out from my Twitter feed, and uh, we can we can talk through it on my feed. But uh, while he's looking for that, I'll talk you through it. So, one of these um, uh, central bank digital currency. Uh, currency that, is yeah. that the one down should, below? Digital currency should be programmable. See that one there? Yeah. Digital He's currency at should the be it says the word programmable. It's top search result. Yep. So, Third line down. Yeah, I see. I see in that. Yep. Should be programmable. Uh, mm. Programming. Yeah. Now, see again. There's a paywall, but uh, maybe start your free trial. Yeah. But you can see the word there, right? Programming in the headline. Now, what yeah. they're doing is they're saying that this digital currency, once you're you, because you know everyone knows that with inflation at over five percent, it's now five point four percent, right? Uh, our fiat money, the paper money, is increasingly becoming worthless and we're headed towards a big disaster. They, the Fed wants to raise interest rates. But we're in so much debt that if you raise interest rates, people are going to suffer because everyone, the, the, you know, we're living on debt as Western economies. So sure. they realize that this kind of the lifespan of paper money is fast coming to an end because of the 2008 economic crash in particular. So they're bringing in these central banking digital currencies. Why is that word programmable in there? So what they said in that article and the, and the chance to put a video out saying this as well. Okay. That's just a little clip. Um, so much to unpack. Yeah. And this is, this is kind of setting <sighs> you up for start? a centralized credit, social credit score system because we already have a normal credit score system. So now you just have to, you have to add the um, ESGs that are already in place and then put that on individuals for them wanting to borrow. And then you are now, um, and now you're becoming like BlackRock where you own all the assets. And now it's like, okay, you're creating a whole system where like, how do you escape that? And is this going to be the destruction and rebirth that we're talking about? Or are we going to have a destruction 
of this completely and really wipe this plan off the face of the earth and come up with a whole new way of doing things that really is mm. more in line with um, individuals and freedom. Those are the two what, outcomes, I yeah. think. Yeah, once again, the dichotomy. Well, let's just create a hypothetical scenario for the U.S. government. If, if this were to actually happen, like what series of steps would they take in order to implement this centralized um, digital currency? I honestly don't think it would be very hard because I think that our government already has a very good relationship with a lot of central banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, et cetera. And so they probably have already been working together providing the U.S. government with data um, on people's transactions, you know, they've probably already created categories of all of us that are, you know, consumers of these banks. Um, so they probably already have databases for which to organize us as potential utilizers of this digital currency and to then like isolate the people who aren't using it yet. And I think, I mean, it's kind of, vague how this like what the evils of it could be but I do think that any federal location any federal program that um, requires like regular citizens to have to pay money in order to use like say the DMV in order to pay for like an ID or like driver school or um, like airlines that are like very closely tied to the government because of TSA I think that anything relating to that might they might require us to pay with the um central currency but like i don't know maybe i'm I'm probably forgetting some but well okay apparently um I, i think you're right i think that banks are already doing this because um i was um watching something from uh i think it was nbc no 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 CNBC, which I think is British, um, and they said that 60% of central banks are experimenting currently in this or in the works of creating a digital wow. currency. Then 90% have been exploring it. So this is definitely going to take place in our lifetime. Something that they said was that... Um, I just don't understand that, though, because... So much of currency and how we manage our transactions is already digitized. Like people don't, we don't have vaults with like dollar bills and coins in it. So why would they then advertise or feel like there's any need to advertise a digital currency depending on the bank? Because we already have that. Because they want us to be part of the Fed bank, which right now, do you have a bank account with the Fed? No. No. Who has the most power? You, B- B- Bank of America or the Fed? The Fed. There's your question. There's the answer to your question. Okay. This will force everyone to be on the same bank system. So like you okay. and I have different banks right now, but yeah. we're still using the U.S. dollar, right? Mm-hmm. But we have different banks. Um, those banks have to compete with each other. Um, That's and true. It's already scary, I think, that our money is digitalized because you could have a cyber attack. And that money just yeah, it disappears. Could just vanish. It's just numbers. And ever since we got rid of the gold standard, which again was the physical tie for money, we've had inflation. So this is going to be now. It's like okay, we don't even have a finite amount of dollars. It's now just digital currency that the government controls. And can they just mine more currency? Is yeah. there going to be a set yeah. amount like Bitcoin or not? And I think that. Yeah, with Bitcoin, the reason why Bitcoin is actually probably the most likely to stay decentralized out of all of them is because the way that that Bitcoin blockchain is set up is it really is unhackable. There's a finite amount. And that's what like the traditional conception of like currency was because when it was backed by gold, we've always known there's a finite amount of it on earth. That's why it's mined. That's why it's harbored. That's why it's you know, like constantly being exchanged throughout people in a very physical way. Well, Bitcoin does the same thing, but it's a digital mine. It's a digital like surplus of it. But like if the Fed were to create a cryptocurrency and advertise it on that same grounds, we would never be able to know the true technology behind it. They could just say, they could literally say whatever and probably market it 
in like the total opposite way. Yeah, and they <laughs> can just wipe your account and you have no one else to turn to. There's no government to bail you out. It's just that's yeah. it. And something that they said that really freaked me out on this was this was in a uh this was actually someone who's kind of developing the system talked about. He said it will make it easier for governments to deliver stimulus checks and make targeted payments to those most in need of the payments. What does that mean? Targeted payments? What does that mean? I don't know. But like what? You know. know what? You know how I read that? It's not targeted payments like to help boost people. It's I, I kind of see the opposite of removal of payments yes. from people who don't need it. Well, what I'm reading it like that. What's happened with the truckers? Anyone apparently in Canada, if you even donated to the truckers in Canada, you could get your bank account wiped or get no <laughs> access to your bank account for making a do do donation. And this isn't a democracy. And we're focused on the Ukraine and Russia. Like what? This is someone who's across our border. And I mean, this is this is insane. It's not far away. And we have to not do this. Absolutely. I <laughs> we need to not do this. But isn't this hilarious? Remember how we said like we love the idea of crypto, but they're it could get centralized and yeah. we always had that hesitation. This is it. This is it. This is it. We're talking about, th we first started talking about that like two years ago, two years ago. Yeah. And that was before we really even knew that much about crypto, which I don't know much more. I think that a lot is so new, especially with like blockchain tech. Or and nodes. I think that they're going to ride that. They're going to yeah. ride that horse so much that people don't know the technology behind it. And so we as people, and you know what, maybe there's a side business for us, learn more about it like actually from a tech standpoint so that we can help teach people like yeah. what is this? And I think that that's like the way that we can go around it and help people be able to have that skill set so that they can already be equipped enough to be able to see the flaws and holes in this new system that's about mm -hmm. to come because no, it's on that. the horizon. It's going to happen very soon. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and those poor truckers, man, like they're just – they're just trying to fight for like lower gas prices and like no vaccine passport. And they're getting like, imagine waking up and losing like $33,000 from your bank account yeah. and wondering why Bank of America did that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's no, what's happening. Actually, there was, I heard a story of a guy in LA, I believe, who had, I think, $12,000 just like, he had, okay, so he had this paycheck that he deposited in person, right? You know, traditional way you're depositing your paycheck, go to the bank, deposit it. Well, I guess the next day that branch, and this was Bank of America, the branch closed, right? So why a branch of Bank of America is closing like without any notice to you if you go in, I, I don't know. But um, they then said that they weren't able to cash his check because the branch closed. And so he had to get like a whole, you know, troop of lawyers and take it to court in order for them to hear out his report. And then finally, once the law got involved, he was able to get the money back. But they weren't going to refund him that money. They weren't going to do that. I don't know. It's just so weird to me. Branch is closing. Yeah, they're probably going to say the there's, no, there's no need for in-person branches anymore. Oh, my Bank of America branch just closed on 32nd and Camelback. That's a great location. Why are yeah. you closing that branch? Yeah, you're right. That's a, like a Like they don't even have that much overhead. I mean, that branch no. has probably been there for years. Yeah, it, it's weird. Something weird's a brewing. I don't know what's happening. I mean, kind of know, but we'll we're see. We're just moving so much more towards the digital world that we're realizing that things in the physical world aren't a value when they are mm -hmm. and we need to hold on to that yeah because that point. will like anything in person when you're interacting with real people when you're seeing your cash get deposited or numbers entered in, into a computer that's more transparent than what this new thing will be yeah where it's just complete completely only numbers in this ether and who knows what the information they're explaining on it is correct or not for sure for sure um is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, I think that was it. I will keep my eyes peeled for anything 
relating to tags on the two 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 Pluto return stuff yeah. because honestly I feel like I've just scratched the surface with understanding this whole world and honestly it's opening my eyes a lot towards astrology as an entire domain I've always been really interested in like astronomy I took astronomy classes growing up and I memorized all the constellations and um, like I know like the math a little bit behind it, but I've never really been into like the symbolism or the Zodiac or anything like that because I separate those two a lot. But I do think that this is opening my eyes to how this can help predict events that are happening in the future and how, how it can help explain like big key events in history, like even tying that back to Napoleon, Stalin, you know, the Declaration of Independence, like these are massive things. So um, the fact that all of that sort of is branched underneath the Pluto return is huge. So, yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I think we just scratched the surface of this. We could definitely... Um, as this continues to arise, we're definitely going to be tracking this and bringing this up in little ways um, here and there in future episodes. Um, before we close out, I do just want to do, I just want to give a shout out to also the American truckers. They're on their way today. Woo! They just started. They actually went through Arizona today, Northern Arizona and Williams. So um, we're rooting them on and they're making their way to D.C. They'll be in D.C. the first or second week of March and they're going to be demanding some stuff from our government. So we're rooting for them. Um, definitely, this is the time to stock up on rice, pasta, um, toilet paper. I mean, I just don't know what's going to happen. So I think if you if you can buy some cheap food just to have around, it um, doesn't hurt. I don't know if you'll necessarily need it, but we just True. everything's so uncertain. So I just want to give people that heads up. Um, and then in terms of announcements, um, please like, subscribe, comment on this episode. We really appreciate it. Um, and then I said this in the previous episode i'm going to repeat it um Giannis papas talks about this all the time but if if you can just share this episode with one person and get one person to subscribe that really helps us out because i mean that would just double our numbers right there and then so do that um watch our video like we talked about earlier if you want to learn more about us and the journey of the podcast and why we do what we do so thank you everyone have a great week um and stay tuned so thank you guys see you later thank you <laughs> Bye. bye